Michael, what should I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Behave yourselves! Hello YouTubers out there, this is Jerry Sutter via the movies. So I wanted to do this off the cuff video, I'm not doing it from my normal location. And I wanted to talk about this because this has been a uh, bone of contention for quite some time. And I think people are not really understanding the whole message. Now, this is in response to The Critical Drinker, who did a recent video called, uh, actually did it about four hours ago, called Hollywood is Abandoning the Message. So apparently... Uh, the Critical Drinker, who, you know, on occasion I listen to some things he says, not all the time. I don't always agree with what he's saying. He does have sort of a sardonic, sarcastic tone, which I appreciate. Whether he believes everything he says, I really don't know. He might. He did this uh, podcast thing with uh, Chris Gore from Film Threat, a guy who I usually do not agree with, on really just about everything. Okay, but that's neither here nor there. Chris Gore apparently made this comment. There were four people in this uh, live, live cast, live podcast, and he said that Marvel is getting rid of many of their producers and people who were pushing for activism in their Marvel movies. That is to say, pushing for the message, and that the message was the core. So, getting rid of that from their Marvel movies. Case in point, apparently, the new Deadpool movie doesn't have any of that stuff. No woke message, no, you know, this or that and the other. So, the Critical Drinker brings up how the director of Twisters said he didn't want to have a global warming message in his movie. Okay, fine. You know, uh, the thing is that without having seen Twisters, I'm going to assume, which is uh, which would be probably be correct, that the message is there. It's just an underlying message without actually being pronounced. It's not made obvious. It's not like every few minutes we have to teach the audience to educate them about global warming that produces much of what we hear about in the news, particularly with the upcoming hurricane. Now, many of these people that comment on this stuff haven't really seen or or <laughs> paid attention to the movies of the past. Thor The Dark World was the last major uh, comic book movie I have seen. I'm just a little tired of them. I will see eventually some. I, I'm not excluding them from my cinematic diet. I'm just interested in many more films. I'm usually more interested in films about people. Uh, this is about people who have extraordinary superpowers. Now, that's not what I'm trying to get at. And I know somebody is watching saying, get to the point. All right, I'm going to. Let's go back in time to something that's not Marvel. We're going to talk now about a superhero movie. Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Not a good movie, but rewatchable for me. I, it's one of those movies I enjoy watching, okay? Uh, I prefer it over Superman 3. You know, there are some bad movies that are, they are good bad movies. Superman 4 is a good bad movie. It's like a movie directed by Ed Wood. So what is Superman 4 about? Well, Superman says, I'm going to get rid of nuclear weapons. And I'm going to hurl all of them into the sun. Woohoo! Now, there are all sorts of problems with that if that were to really happen. But it's a movie, and it's about Superman. So, but he makes that message. It's a message movie. And that's why Christopher Reeve wanted to make Superman 4, to be a message movie. 1987, right? Only four years after War Games. What did we have? We had a host of movies about nuclear war, about nuclear war fallout, about everything. Testament, 1983, with uh, Jane Alexander, which I believe was shown on PBS before it actually made it into theaters. I could be wrong. We also had The Day After, uh, a TV movie came out in 1983. We had a mini series called America with a K. Okay? So, anyway, those are not comic book movies, but Superman 4 is. And that came out in 1987. I haven't seen any Marvel movies. Of course, I haven't seen any since Thor The Dark World, so I'm being fair, okay? I haven't watched She Hulk, which I understand has an agenda. We'll get back to that word in a second. 
But Superman 4, I mean, I haven't seen anything like that in any of the comic book movies I've seen. Okay, Superman 4 was clearly about that. You see the poster, Superman's flying, and he's holding a nuclear weapon that's been torn apart. Okay, a missile. The message is in the movie. It's a message movie. Christopher Reeve has been quoted, even through his autobiography, I believe, as saying that. This was a message movie. That's why I made this movie. So, I guess my point is this. No matter what movie you do, and this is kind of what Critical Drinker was saying, if you want to make a movie that's sheer entertainment and nothing else, pure entertainment, right? Don't make me think about the real world at all. Please don't make a message movie. Don't comment on the real world. We want to escape to whatever it is that we're seeing here. And nothing to do with the real world at all. Nothing. We want to check our brain at the door, as they used to say. Well, here's the problem. I know what they're trying to say. And I get that. I, I certainly understand it. Like I said, Superman 4. If there is any comic book movie that anybody has seen since Thor The Dark World that is a message movie, please let me know in the comments. Okay? Because I have missed out on some of these. I've heard complaints, certainly from Critical Drinker, from uh, Chris Gore, from many other people. All right? Fine. You can't... This is what I heard um, from a few people online who hate Star Wars now, like, like with such a passion, it's almost, <laughs> I, you know, I can't imagine, I mean, I don't, if you really don't like any of the new Star Wars stuff, fine, okay, that's, hey, that's, a, you know, uh, there's too much of it. However, when somebody says, can't they just make entertainment the way it used to be, when it was just entertainment, I'm a little confused. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because, let's go back to Superman. All right, so let's leave a let's leave aside Superman four for the time being. So we could talk about let's say Superman three. All right, Superman three, which I consider the least of the Superman movies, but this is not a review. Superman three deals with a few things that do happen in real life, believe it or not. So one of them being unemployment. That's the first scene in the movie. Richard Pryor's Gus Gorman. Uh, is waiting in the unemployment line to get his unemployment check. And he's denied because he's trying to find work and blah, blah, blah. Okay, and this was during the Reagan era, but there were a lot of people out of work. That's the first scene of the movie. Now, is a message being delivered right at the beginning of the movie, or is this just the story of Gus Gorman? Well, I'm going to say probably both. Okay. Because, oh, well, maybe Gus Gorman shouldn't have been shown in an unemployment line, because now you're reminding me of the real world. I don't know if anyone's ever said that about Superman 3. But you know what? In those days, nobody talked about wokisms. No, nobody talked about any of that stuff. But that doesn't mean that you don't want to deal at all with anything that's going on in the ether. You can't really make a movie that doesn't deal with anything that's going on. I mean, what would be the point? Even in a Superman movie. Now, is there a message to Superman 3? Uh, perhaps the technology is... The more we advance it, the more it's uh, problematic. Could be a message in that movie, sure. Is it being, uh, you know, actually delivered by in lines of dialogue by characters who say these things out loud so that we know what the message is? No, it's not, to be fair. But in Superman 4, it sure is. So, I guess my point is this. You can't make a movie, as they say, Critical Drinker and all these other people, that is just pure entertainment and has nothing to say about anything that's going on in the goddamn world. You can't do that. Because no matter what, you're going to touch upon things that are happening. And there are things that are going on now. Are we saying that any movie that's made during a certain decade, whether it's the 1980s, 1990s, the year 2000, uh, really that whole stretch of the year of 2000, I mean, look at 24. 
If that wasn't a commentary on post-9-11 terrorism, I don't know what is. Did it make it clear that it was about that? Yes, it did. It sure did. Did we need to be told that message? Well, maybe. We can't ignore it, can we? You can't ignore 9-11 when you were making movies after 2001. You can't. Why would you? It, it was a fact. Television dealt with it. Everybody dealt with it. The message was clear. It, it was a horrific terrorism uh, act in this country. So, the point is, no matter what, when a movie comes out on a certain decade, a book, a play, a painting, a sculpture, whatever, everything is reflective of what's going on. If you want to make a movie that isn't reflective of anything that's going on at all in the ether, don't make a movie. Don't write a book. Don't write a play. Now, there's a way to do it where you can be, where you can, it can be an implicit message, but it's a message nonetheless. It's a message nonetheless. There's always some message being delivered. There's always some way to sum up a movie that's trying to tell you something. If you prefer movies that don't tell you anything, okay, fine. You tell me which movies don't say anything at all about the real world, don't communicate a damn thing about it. It's an escape from reality, and they certainly do not deliver a message, explicitly or implicitly. I would like to know what they are. I want to know these movies even when it's just pure entertainment. Please tell me. So I guess my point is, I have not really seen a movie, a comic book movie, again, it's been a little while, but of the ones I've seen, okay, uh, the first Avengers, Avengers Age of Ultron, I haven't seen the other Avengers yet, uh, I haven't seen Black Panther yet, or its sequel, and so on and so forth. But my point is this, if you can name a comic book movie that has no relation to anything that's happening in the world, tell me in the comments. If you can name an action movie today, mainstream action movie, that has no relation to anything that's going on in the real world and doesn't deliver a message, again, implicitly or explicitly, tell me in the comments. But Superman 4... I've not seen a comic book movie quite like that since, and that was back in 1987, and that's what these people forget. That particularly with leftists, Christopher Reeve was one, he believed that, which, you know, it, it's not a bad thing to believe, to get rid of nuclear weapons. And the Superman character was made for that. Now, you may not agree with that, and you may think this is not what Superman would consider, but why wouldn't he? Because the movie came out during the 1980s, and everybody was worried about nuclear war. Are you, gonna, are you saying that it's better to just make a movie that ignores any sort of issue whatsoever, because then we have to think about it? Or is it because you don't want the message being made explicitly? Because if the message wasn't made explicitly... Well, he still has to deliver a message, you know, and he's addressed, there's a scene where he addresses the UN. I mean, you kind of need that scene. Uh, or maybe not. I don't know. But again, we're talking about a movie that's almost 40 years, you know, old. And uh, not a good movie. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. And I do agree. We don't need a message being delivered bluntly to the audience. Implying, underscoring, underlying message, Yes. But there's always a message. And here's the other thing. Agenda. All art, all art, even bad art, promotes an agenda. Always. There are no exceptions. And if the, the agenda could be anything. The agenda could be feminism. The agenda could be anti-feminism. The agenda could be masculinity. The agenda could be toxic masculinity, anti-masculinity, anti-crime, pro-crime. I mean, it could be anything. But you're always promoting an agenda, no matter what. All art does that. So it can't be ignored. And I just had to say that because, you know, I've been thinking about these things for a while. And I've heard these people talking about these things. And again, it's not that I completely disagree with them. 
but it's just a matter of understanding that all art does in some way, in some fashion or another, deliver a message. Bluntly or not, it's there, okay? That's all I gotta say. So, let me your thoughts. Tell me if you think that it's better just to make a movie that has no message at all, that it has no relation to anything that's happening, if it's a comic book movie or Star Wars, uh, that shouldn't promote an agenda, even though you may agree that all art does. That it should just be purely entertainment and nothing else. Let me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. I'd like to hear uh, some comments out there from people. And what do you think about the critical drinker, what he had to say? Um, I'm curious. That's all i got to say about that. Um, if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. I uh, want to thank all my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. If you aren't a subscriber and you like what you hear, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, for those who are subscribers already, please hit the notification bell for future uploads. That's all i got to say about this. This is um, always a heavy subject, but uh, tell me what you think. And this is Jerry Sadovia at the Movies, signing off.